ladies and gentlemen, welcome back at the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries. We are here at the public forum and I invite you to come and have a seat, have a complimentary drinks. Don't be shy, you can just come and sit down. There will be a lovely lady walking around and serving you with drinks. Also at this time, I would like to say hello to all our online guests. We are live streaming from the fair to all different nationalities. For now, I would like to um, welcome you to enjoy the next topic. We'll talk about hydrogen racing fossil parity in an increasing numbers of markets. For that, please welcome with me on stage Vice President for Market Development, Björn Simonsen of Nell Hydrogen. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. So, I'm really excited for this talk. Because I like the title so much, Hydrogen Reaching Fossil Parity. So who came up with that interesting title? Well, um, most people in the renewable industry are already familiar with grid parity. That is when uh, an energy source, might be wind or solar, reaches a, a competitive level with the existing uh, electricity generation that is already there. Well, for hydrogen to become a success, it needs to reach a parity and it needs to in fact beat the existing uh, regime which is fossil based and hence the coin fossil parity. So what, what does beating mean? Is that price wise or energy wise? Price, you know, at the end of the day what you pay at the pump is what defines which fuel will actually survive in a very, at least in a cynical market, and, and some of the markets are quite cynical. So for, for hydrogen to be a success, it surely needs to be uh, cheaper uh, and better than, than the existing fuels. And um, that is also one of the big trigger points, I think, for the big industrial players not only the car manufacturers, but also for, for industrial players to, in a sense, go back to electrolysis for production of their hydrogen. Let's have a focus on the car manufacturers and, and especially on fueling. What is the current fueling price, for example, in Norway currently? In Norway, without taxes, the fuel cost is about 1.4 euros per liter. That is very high. Here in Europe, it's about 1.1 euros per liter. So what we did, we, we took our technology, our current technology of electrolyzers, of fueling stations, our knowledge about building fueling networks, which we already have done several places. And we put all this together, and we have a utilization factor of about 70% of uh, the infrastructure, and we can see that we today are competitive with fossil fuel. In fact, with the electricity price we have in Norway today, we are uh, hitting about 0.8 euros per liter equivalent. That is roughly 5 euros per kilo hydrogen. That is with all investments included and a margin on the hydrogen. By the way, if you do have any questions, you can just raise your hand and I'll come down with a microphone. Just, just wave so I can see you. So back to hydrogen. So uh, once again, what is the cost for hydrogen currently? Um, well, the, the, the cost for hydrogen currently is, is, is tremendously high. Uh, that is because, uh, well, it, it all depends on how you define it. If you build a station and you have 10 cars using it, the actual cost of hydrogen will be very, very high. And that's why you need to look at this from a perspective of a, a market where you have a, a minimum amount of cars, a minimum amount of users, which you will have in a, in, a, in a functioning market. So the car manufacturers will not launch the cars until they see that there can be a well-functioning market based on, on a hydrogen which is sustainable and affordable. And which markets are possible markets or already competing with fossil fuel? Well, what, uh, we, what we do, we, we base our calculus on, on the electricity price. So in Norway today, the uh, average electricity price is about 4 euro cents per kilowatt hour. And in a scenario like that, you will get uh, a hydrogen price of about 5 euros per kilo, all included. 
So depending on what the fossil fuel price is in your market, hydrogen will already be competitive. It is several places in Europe. In California, where we are also establishing ourselves, it's still uh, not competitive with today's prices, but we see it will be in a 2020 time frame. In, in 2020, California has the potential to also reach prices that are uh, in parity with fossil fuels for hydrogen? Absolutely. With the right utilization rate, we will surely be there. And we see that we will also be able to go lower than that. What, what utilization are you assuming? You just mentioned you, you, you're assuming 70%. So yes. what if there would be higher utilization, which is possible? Of course, then, then the case gets better. And we've used quite conservative numbers also for the transport of hydrogen from uh, wherever you produce it to the consumer. So on all accounts, we see that this case will just improve. And we do not only see potential in the fueling industry, but also in the whole energy market and the industry. So how large is the actual market for hydrogen? Well, the market for hydrogen, and I mentioned this a couple of years ago also, we should look at the existing hydrogen market also. It's tremendously big. It's, uh, it's more than 50 million tons per year. And today, electrolysis only accounts for 1% of that market. The rest is steam, methane, reform-based, and, and uh, oil and coal. Um, and what we, what we recently have done, we have made a, a, a redesign uh, of a plant, which is 400 megawatt large. That is in dialogue with a, with a very uh, concrete industrial uh, customer. And we see that we, on a capex level, get below uh, steam methane reforming. So we're on a capex level of $450 per kilowatt for the electrolyzer part. And if we have an electricity price of, say, three euro cent per, per uh, kilowatt hour, we also beat reforming on, on the OPEX side. So you already mentioned your electrolyzer, and I'm pretty sure there are many faces here that would like to know what your ca company does besides electrolyzers. What NEL, what, what, what is the company profile and history of NEL, briefly? Well, we're actually, we're actually celebrating our 90-year anniversary this year. We are actually the, the oldest uh, company in this uh, business. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and, uh, and the funny thing is that the whole business was started up based on really, really large-scale hydrogen production for the industrial sector. Uh, plants of several hundred megawatts uh, were built uh, almost 90 years ago. And the interesting thing is that we are now seeing this coming back. Obviously, we've done quite a bit of development on our technology since then, both on cost and efficiency. And we see that we have a, uh, have a great potential for cost reductions going forward, both on the technology side itself, but also an engineering part. And when did you start researching on the electrolyzer that you're currently selling? Well, that, that is a, it's been a continuous development uh, right from the start. We, we are also doing other kinds of uh, development uh, tracks on, on the electrolysis side. We are in the process of acquiring a Proton on site, which is right behind us here. So we will soon be the, the biggest uh, electrolyzer company globally. Uh, so, so there's uh, definitely lots of activities ongoing in that area. In addition to our fueling station part, uh, where we have a, a very, very good uh, fueling station product, which enables us to make these calculations, because we know what cost uh, reductions we can make going forward by 2020, 2030, both on fueling, electrolysis, we put this into the model, and then we get the numbers which look quite good. So not only very successful electrolyzers, but also hydrogen station. How many hydrogen stations do you have in Norway? In Norway, there are about uh, five hydrogen stations operating today, so that's not very much. Uh, there is a support program coming out this spring for fueling stations. We have established a joint venture with uh, the leading retail company in Norway and, uh, and uh, Praxair to build a network of fueling stations all across Norway. So the target is 20 stations by 2020, which we think we will achieve as well. And what, what is necessary to achieve this? Is there, do we need we need demand, right? We need uh, hydrogen fuel-based uh, fuel cars. Yes, yes, we do. And, and that's part of 
why we are publishing the numbers on, on fossil parity. It's to send a clear message to the car manufacturers, to governments uh, around that this fuel is both sustainable and it's also economically feasible on a large scale. So the car industry, is that the link to push the hydrogen industry to a competitive, competitive and successful market? They, together with uh, us and others who are manufacturing both electrolyzers and fueling stations, uh, they need to be certain that we can meet uh, the demand that will arise if they say we, we will produce 100,000 cars. They need to be certain that there is production capacity for, for fueling stations as well. Which is why we are now in the process of opening a new manufacturing plant for, for fueling stations in Denmark which has the capacity of, of 300 stations per year when run at full capacity. And when will that open? Uh, it will open uh, sometime uh, summer, uh, over summer. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll uh, announce uh, more closely when, when we are uh, ready with that. Um, with hydrogen technology, for your personal opinion, Norway is already um, very good. I think better than Germany in promoting uh, hydrogen as an alternative um, base. Uh, when do you think hydrogen technology can outcompete fossil fuels? Well, if you, if you take Norway, uh, the, the really, really interesting development that is happening there now is on uh, the maritime sector. Norway is a big maritime uh, nation. Uh, even though we don't have Vikings anymore, we still have good shipbuilders. Uh, and we have shipbuilders that have been supplying uh, lots of solutions to the petroleum industry. And as you know, petroleum is quite cheap these days, so, so they are looking at other, uh, other pathways. Where is the next boom for them? Where can they be competitive in the future? So now we see all the maritime players in Norway are being engaged within hydrogen drivetrains for, for boats. And not just small boats, they're looking at big passenger car ferries and even bigger vessels. So that is a really, truly interesting opportunity where also Norwegian players can, can uh, make a difference. And that really opens up opportunities for, for many suppliers uh, present here at the fair today. And is there also support from the government? Absolutely. Uh, so there, there will be uh, the first uh, hydrogen car ferry will be in operation by 2021 in Norway, which is not very long uh, from now, yeah. uh, and, and uh, government is fully behind that, mm -hmm. uh, dragging their feet a little bit on the hydrogen infrastructure for passenger vehicles, but things are happening uh, there as well. So I think a lot of, a lot of good things are coming together now and, and putting good momentum on this process. And Nail has uh, been jumping on the bandwagon already a long time ago. It actually started 90 years ago. The technology was already supported. And what is the strategy for Nail for the future? Well, we obviously have to beat uh, fossil, both on the fuel market and the industry market. And we see that's within reach. So, uh, so we're really looking forward to, to start building these, these really, really large plants to, to demonstrate that it can be done. Well, price-wise, you, you already uh, showed that it's definitely compatible, uh, at least in Norway and, and soon in California and some European countries as well. But let's have a look at the, the energy mm -hmm. in terms of the characteristics of hydrogen in comparison to fuel, diesel, gas. How can, how can the hydrogen technology outcompete? I mean, with, with regards to energy, it, it, it obviously is, is the most energy dense per, per kilogram uh, fuel uh, out there. Uh, and, and the energy content or energy used or as such, uh, the, the kilowatt uh, hours aren't uh, that important. I mean, you, you obviously use energy to produce hydrogen, but when you use it from uh, increasingly from renewable energy, then that part of the part of the matter isn't that important anymore. Well, currently the energy that used to put, uh, to produce hydrogen is, is so high that the outcome of the energy later on is, is reduced, right? Mm -hmm. So, do you think in the future time that will be 100% um, that can be used? So, the electricity that is used to with the electrolyzer to split to get the hydrogen. At the end, you will get as much hydrogen as uh, well. You get as much electricity. 
Well, if you mean the utilization of the energy available, uh, yes, absolutely. You have more flexible electrolyzers uh, coming into the market that can capture uh, a, a wider spectrum of whatever energy you have available from, uh, from renewables. Uh, but I think the key here is that, that the renewable will drive the hydrogen business and it will drive it to uh, competitiveness and outcompete fossil fuels. And what is really driving? Is that the demand side or is that the companies like Nell that are pushing? No, it, it, it's more uh, companies, uh, countries that don't want to import fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. They're really driving this yeah. and they see that uh, on electricity production, this can beat their current fossil production and it will reduce the emissions, etc. all of these positive effects that you have on that. And then they say, oh, we can produce our own fuel as well. And then Björn, uh, Nell is, uh, been, has been here for several years now already and um, is uh, well known. And also uh, this year you're going to North America. You're going to the Solar Power International, to the Hydrogen Group Exhibit for the first time. The group exhibit mm -hmm. will uh, extend and will take place in North America. What are your expectations for uh, doing business in North America? Our expectations are very high and, and they have to some degree been met already because we see California as the most important market for uh, passenger vehicles within hydrogen uh, for the time being and, and will be in, in the coming years as well. So to be present there uh, is, is uh, important, uh, both for us uh, and also for, uh, uh, for, for our partners. And, and uh, what we see is that to an increasing degree, hydrogen is being produced from solar electricity. So to have uh, the, the, um, the fair co-located with the solar industry will be, uh, will be interesting in, in it, and it will create a dialogue which I think will be very, very useful going forward, both to meet uh, the targets currently in California of 33% renewable hydrogen, but also to go beyond that. And I think that the title of your presentation saying that hydrogen will reach fossil parity for when I first read that, I thought, well, this is, this is like the headline of the Hanover newspaper. And I, but I really liked it. And I, when we talked, you're so confident, and the company is so confident that, that it, it can be real. And I think this is exactly what is needed to, to stress on, yes, it's possible. Yes, we have the numbers. And I think with 70% utilization, that's really realistic. But being more optimistic, then soon the goal, goal can be reached. And Norway is really a role model in using renewable energy. And Thank today you. we didn't have so much time to talk about the electrolyzer that you have on your booth, but this afternoon you will also be participating in an elevator pitch, is that exactly. right? Yeah. So in the technical forum this afternoon with, ten, uh, with nine other competitors, uh, yeah. you can compare all the... Eight. <laughs> we have a, a new one, we have another one. Yeah. So, uh, okay. so there are more and more that want to join the yeah. elevator pitch, so you have to compete with a little bit more. Yeah. So uh, all of them get four or five minutes and will pitch the um, the electrolyzer and then at the end uh, there will be a discussion and mm -hmm. you'll be there as well. Yes. For now I really have to close because I know the other moderators are already waiting for the next talk but if you do have more questions to Björn then you can easily reach him right after the talk at the booth B60. Yeah, it's right over there. It's right across here um, together with the other Norwegian exhibitors. Thank you very much. That was Björn Simonsen from Nell. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay seated for the next talk that will start in just a few minutes. Uh, it will, the topic will be Industrial Supply of Advanced SOFC Materials by Andreas Richter, the Sales and Marketing Manager by Serbotec. Thank you.